Hello people, in this video let us look at the physiology of larynx, uh, that means the functions of larynx actually there, according to the textbook. So uh, the larynx functions are um, these, these are the important functions, protection of lower airway, so where is larynx here, right? So uh, what is below this, this is larynx, below this what do you have? The lungs, right? The trachea, the bronchi, so basically um, the larynx will protect the lower airways. That's all. Larynx will protect the lower airways. This is the main function of larynx. So how will it protect? It will make sure that it will close these vocal folds, right, and pr protect the lower airway. So that is uh, protection. We will come to the details. Then second one is phonation. Those same vocal folds will help you to uh, talk, sing, scream, laugh, or maybe, yeah. Then uh, respiration. Respiration is the third one they have mentioned here. So respiration, uh, how will the larynx help in this respiration? Let's look at that. And lastly, they're saying fixation to the chest. What does it fix to the chest, the larynx? Okay, let's look at this. First, let us look at this protection of lower airways. Phylogenetically, protection of lower airway is an earliest function to develop. So this is the most important one. How does it actually protect the lower airways? By sphincteric closure of the laryngeal opening, cessation of respiration, cough reflex. So, uh, cessation of respiration, don't take anything in, uh, just protect it, uh, sphincteric closure of the laryngeal opening, cough reflex. So, any foreign body is there, cough it out. So, when food is swallowed, so let us say you are swallowing, okay, so where is the esophagus? Esophagus is here behind the trachea. So, the food that you swallow has to go into the esophagus. So, what will happen, this epiglottis, right, mainly this uh, epiglottis, this thing has nothing much important role in um, swallowing, but anyways, this epiglottis should fall uh, here. Here, what you have, you have the array epiglottic folds. So, between the um, between the arytenoids and the epiglottis, you have the array epiglottic folds, these, and then the tubercle of um, glottis, the tubercle of glottis, right? Um, so, and these arytenoids, these will approximate in such a way that they will close the laryngeal inlet completely. So, where will the food go? The food has to go into the esophagus. So, if there is any food above this, it will do a cough reflex and it will try to throw it out. The false cords also are uh, sphincters, right? They are saying these are also sphincters that close and true vocal cords also close the glottis. Glottis is the opening into the trachea, right? So, all these will close. Next, cessation of respiration. Respiration temporarily ceases through a reflex generated by afferent fibers of ninth nerve. So, here they are saying ninth nerve. Do they mean cranial nerve or spinal nerve? When food comes in contact with posterior pharyngeal wall or the base of the tongue. So glossopharyngeal nerve is for the cough reflex, right? So how are they saying cessation of respiration? Respiration is temporarily stopped, okay? How? Through a reflex which is generated by the ninth uh, nerve. When does this happen? When the food comes in contact with the posterior pharyngeal wall or, or the base of the tongue. So, you just take the food a little back of your uh, tongue, okay, base of the tongue if it reaches or if it reaches the posterior pharyngeal wall, there will be a reflex which is generated by the fibers of the ninth nerve because of which the respiration will stop. That is the cessation of respiration. So, basically you are preparing to swallow, isn't it? So, there will be cessation of respiration. Then you have the cough reflex. Cough is a very important, okay, it's an important and powerful mechanism to dislodge and expel a foreign particle, right, which comes in contact with the respiratory mucosa. So, if something goes to contact of the respiratory mucosa, right, uh, there is a cough which is, which is going to be a mechanism to dislodge and expel a foreign particle. So, that is why this larynx is called as the watchdog of lungs. It immediately barks at the entry of any foreign intruder. Wow. So, they are saying larynx is a watchdog of lungs as it immediately barks at the entry of any foreign intruder. So, if there is a foreign particle which comes in contact with the respiratory mucosa, what will be there? Cough, cough, reflex. So, who is this? A watchdog. So, who is the watchdog for us? Yes, it's the larynx. It starts barking as soon as some foreign particle comes. So, larynx is watchdog of lungs. Okay. So, larynx is the watchdog of what? Of the lungs as it immediately barks at the entry of any foreign intruder. So, we have completed this uh, protection of lower airways. So, that was the first uh, function of larynx, protection of lower airways. So, the larynx will protect your lower airways. That is the main function, earliest function also. Then you have the phonation. Now, let us look at phonation. 
so phonation so this is the function of larynx so larynx is like a wind instrument voice is produced by the following mechanism what is the mechanism aerodynamic myoelastic theory of voice production so there is some aerodynamic myoelastic theory of voice production vocal cords are kept adducted adducted means what together right vocal cords are kept adducted you can say medial uh, um, um, they both are medial both of them will be medial right both of them will be medial that will be adducted okay so here you have the vocal cords this is anterior and this is posterior so they are adducted now and the infra glottic air pressure is generated by the exhaled air from the lungs so from the lungs you have having some exhaled air coming right so there will be infra glottic air pressure okay uh, why because of the contraction of thoracic and the abdominal muscles because of the contraction of these thoracic and the abdominal muscles you have this pressure which pressure infra glottic air pressure the air forces open the cords so then the air will force open these cords see the cords have come apart right the force it will force open these cords and release a small puff right which vibrates these vocal cords and produces sound which is amplified by the mouth pharynx nose and chest so small sound will come here from here from the vocal cord and that will be amplified they are saying by the mouth the pharynx the nose and the chest also will amplify the sound is it interesting so this sound is converted into speech by the modulatory action of lips tongue palate pharynx and teeth so you will move your mouth and uh, make give that a speech you will make that what you will make make that air into sound and that into speech air will become sound will become speech okay intensity of sound depends on the air pressure while the pitch depends on the frequency which which the cords vibrate so if you want the frequency then you have to uh, the pitch depends on the frequency of the vocal cords and what about the volume the intensity that depends on the air pressure the air pressure will decide the volume i mean the intensity of the sound but if the frequency uh, whatever that that is the vibration of the vocal cord okay respiration guys uh, so larynx uh, how does it help you in respiration larynx regulates the flow of air into the lungs so if the lungs has to receive the air it has to go via the larynx so it has to give some way for the respiration vocal cords abduct during inspiration so during inspiration if the air has to go in what it will it do the vocal cords will abduct right so the air can go in and during expiration what will these vocal cords do they will adduct it seems if they adduct then only you will get voice that's only for voice right that you need to adduct otherwise you don't need to adduct right during its expiration what do you say okay lastly let's go to fixation to the chest so what is this larynx fixing to the chest when larynx is closed the chest wall gets fixed and various thoracic and abdominal muscles can act best so whenever you want to climb or pull or dig you know want to want to do some physical activity the muscles of the thorax and the abdomen they act best when the larynx is closed interestingly so when the larynx is closed the chest wall gets fixed and various thoracic and abdominal muscles can act can then act best keep your mouth keep your voice closed larynx closed voice box closed when you want to dig pull climb okay so that you can use your muscles at the best okay coughing vomiting defecation micturition childbirth also requires a fixed thoracic cage against a closed glottis so close your glottis of and then you have a closed larynx your thoracic cage will get fixed so even while childbirth you want to push you want to cough you want to vomit you want to defecate you want to uh, pass urine etc it is best to keep the larynx closed because you can fix fix the chest so you will muscles will work best that is the physiology of larynx guys we finished what and all rests do first of all protect the lower airway this is the main thing then phonation then respiration then uh, fixation of the chest that's all for now in functions of larynx bye bye